Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this lunch hour so long. My name is Kim Christofferson, and I'm from Kimber Bell, of course. And um, today we are going to be doing the first part of the Lucky Us So Along. Now, um, if you haven't gotten your pattern yet, it's not too late. You can download this immediately at Kimberbell.com. Just simply go to uh, Kimberbell.com, then click over to products, then go over to the vault, the vault, and there you're going to see um, all these different patterns that you can download. And this one today is called Lucky Us. Now, if you've been with Kimberbell for a really long time, you know that about, wow, 10 years ago, we did a Lucky Us wall hanging. Well, now those wall hangings have been miniaturized just a bit so that we can do them on the embroidery machine and make them into this fun pillow. So this uses an 18 by 18 inch pillow form, and then we will do the flange around it so it makes it a, a 22 by 22 inch pillow really fun stuff. You know, this is like the perfect size that I can decorate a bench or a, uh, or a bed or even a couch with real quickly and easily. And voila, I'm ready for St. Patrick's Day. All right. So this again is Lucky Us. You can download it immediately. Um, this is also going to be recorded. So if you're not catching this live or if you've got other places to be right now, no problem. Uh, you you can find this at any given time on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel um, as well. And you can watch them as many times as you'd like. So today is the first day of this so long. We're also going to meet together again at uh, noon mountain time uh, on Wednesday and then again on Friday. So it is a three part series. I'd love for you to be able to join me for all three. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look, shall we, at this pillow form, or this pillow right here. I think we're going to get an overhead shot. There we go. I'm going to turn this around. Ah, isn't that so pretty? I love it. There are so many fun techniques that you're going to, to learn as part of this sew along. Um, some of the highlights for me are one, I absolutely love this uh, blue vase right here. We used our uh, blue vinyl. This is our mint color vinyl. And so as you can see there, it just gives that little shimmer and shine to make it really look like a glass vase. And then you're going to learn how to do these dimensional uh, little blossoms in the hoop. This is with a, a lace technique. So we'll make those together. And then I'll show you how to add them to here. I love all the different embellishments, the Kimber embellishments, as we like to call them here, um, to make these different clovers. So we've got our glitter applique here. We've got our sea foam leather here and then just regular fabric here. One of my favorite things as I was making this uh, just this weekend was to actually do this pot of gold because I'll tell you what, our digitizer uh, that put this together, her and her team of testers really worked hard to make this gold look just as spectacular as it does. So there you're going to see some shimmer and shine of uh, glitter and leather combined with the black, le black leather for the pot. It's just really, really fun. So let me go ahead and tell you how we're going to, let's go ahead and go to the front. I'm going to tell you how we're going to uh, break this up over the next three parts. Today, I'm actually going to show you how to do your background quilting all in the hoop, which is such a fun technique uh, using the Kimberbell background quilting files. So I'll show you how you can incorporate uh, both of those, you know, the background quilting plus the applique pieces on top. And I will show you how easy that really is to do. All right. So that's one of the things we're going to do today. Uh, the other thing we're going to do are the little lace flowers, the dimensional blossoms. Uh, we'll put one of those together as well. And then I'm going to uh, show you how I've done the applique here. Just a little tip on doing the applique on this block as well. Then on Wednesday, we're going to meet together again and we'll go over the pieced blocks that are included in here, including the piece rainbow 
that you see here. It's almost like a, a quarter of a, a Dresden fan, which I absolutely think is adorable. And then we've also got um, this pieced double windmill block. Can you believe that is all done on the embroidery machine? So cool, right? Let's see if we can get, take a closer look at some of those things here. All right, so we're gonna take another look here. Oh, here we go. That's so much better there, Andrew, thank you. So <laughs> I, I've got Brielle and Libby and Andrew uh, with me today so they can also help answer questions and get some more up close shots there so together as a team we're gonna make this the best it can be for you all right so there is the pieced dresden fan that becomes part of your rainbow they ah oh, these are the gold um gold leather and gold glitter coins that i just think are so so darling and then we're going to talk about whoop, here we go this double windmill block uh, as well on Wednesday. And I'll also show you how you can quilt this all in the hoop as well, okay? And then the other thing I wanna show on Wednesday, we're not gonna talk about it today necessarily, but if you don't have a hoop that's large enough for this background quilting that's behind the hat, no problem. On Wednesday, I'm gonna show you how you can create background quilting on a larger size block even if you don't have the hoop size to make it that way, we're going to do that with the use of clear blue tiles. So that's another thing I will show on Wednesday. But today it's all about the applique, all right, and background quilting. And then on Friday, we're going to go over uh, all of the how to put this together, how to do the background quilting on your inner border and on your flange border, put it all together. And by Friday afternoon, you're gonna have this whole thing done. Can you believe it? You really will. So I'm super excited. How about you? It looks like we've got lots of uh, people here today uh, joining me, and that means you are super excited to get started with this project. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, the first thing I want you to make sure and do, of course, is you know have your fabrics ready. We show you in the instructions a, 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 an easy way to um, organize your fabrics in little bags. Um, so that's always very helpful when you go to do a project like this. I also like to print my instructions uh, when I go to do this. Some people like to look at them on their computer and that's certainly okay too. For me, because I'm teaching this lesson, I put, gave myself some little notes and you you may want to do the same. So uh, if you want to have that printed out, now would be the time to have that done. Now, the first thing I want to direct your uh, eyes to is page four. Let's go ahead and go to this camera, Andrew, so I can show you on page four what um, how this page will help you figure out what your background quilting uh, can be. Now we do sell these background quilting files as a bundle um, over at Kimberbell.com. Again, you go to Kimberbell.com, click on products, and then go to background quilting. And if you click on by project, you'll find all of the quilting files that we used for this Lucky Us. Now, certainly because you have been building your own library of quilt designs from Kimberbell, you can use anything that uh, would work in here, but I'm gonna show you today how I used these ones, all right? So uh, there is a list of what those all are. The first thing I want you to now do, or the next thing I want you to do, is turn to page, the first block we're going to work on together is page 14. Okay, on page 14, this is the Clover 1 block, and this is where I'm going to use some glitter applique uh, for that Clover, all right? Now, it gives you two options here. I want you to take a look here at the very top. It says block by block quilting or, um, well, and traditional hooping. So what I want you to think about is 
am I going to do block by block quilting? Meaning, am I going to quilt my background first? Um, if you're going to quilt your background first, like I'm going to show you here, then I want you to take a look at what it says under block by block quilting. If you're not interested in quilting at first and you want to just do all the appliques and then piece it together afterwards and then either take it to a long armor to do uh, your project or you could, you know, do some things like stitch in the ditch, that certainly works as well. So think in your mind, do I want to do background quilting? all on my embroidery machine so that when it's done, it really is done. Uh, that would be my preference. That's I love being able to, to get this all done on my embroidery machine. So if you want to go that route, then you want to look at the directions at the top of page 14 to say, yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my background quilting first. All right. So that's what I'm going to show you today is how to do that background quilting. All right. So on, let's see, if again, if you look at the top of page 14, um, it will tell you that our sample that we used was made with the KDQ081 plaid design, okay? And we used the four by four design for this. All right, so now that we know that we are using the four by four design, we can find that on our download. Again, this is a separate download um, for background quilting. And with that comes some instructions, okay? So this would apply to any, any of our background quilting designs, okay? So this is where I took the plaid design and I printed out my instructions. Of course, I'm gonna show you how easy it is right now on the machine, but this is what I want you to look at. With that download comes all these different sizes. I am looking at the four by four, okay? Because again, it listed on my instructions that I need the four by four size. So this is the four by four. Now, if I go to the next page in my instructions, I see a couple of charts. Because I want the four by four name, okay? This is, says it's the file name is four by four. I've circled it here in green, okay? Um, my finish size is actually also going to be four by four, but my batting, I want to cut at a five by five inch size. All right. And then I want you to go all the way to this last column where it says embroidery field. The embroidery field of this is actually 4.5 by 4.5. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the front. The reason why it's larger on this particular design is because we are doing something called block by block quilting. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Now, I'm giving you some background information right now just so that it starts to, to, to sink in your mind like, okay, if I'm doing block by block quilting, which means I'm doing one block at a time, and then I'm gonna sew all these blocks together at the very end. That is what we call block by block quilting, okay? That means that when you do this, your batting is not gonna be inside your seams. That is awesome news, okay, you guys? That is fantastic because when we go to sew all these blocks together, we don't want the batting to be in the seams. It would be really bulky. So our digitizing on block by block quilting allows that to not be in the seams. It's awesome, okay? Now, if we were doing clear blue tiles quilting, that's a little different. And I'm gonna talk about that one on Wednesday. That one especially works well when we don't have a hoop size that's large enough to do this big one we can still have background quilting with clear blue tiles, okay? So for today's purposes, I'm just going to find the, the folder that says block by block quilting, and it is the four by four size, and I put it onto my machine, all right? Now, when we talk about combining designs, there's three different ways you can do this. I'm combining my background quilting. I even printed off a, a page that you can better visualize this, okay? Let's take a look over here. 
here's my four by four. This is my background quilting. Don't you love that plaid? Okay. This is my background quilting, but I want to have, let's back up just a little bit, but I want to put this applique design on top of the background quilting, right? I want to combine those two together. So when I'm talking about combining designs, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Background quilting, and then my applique goes on top of the background quilting. So how do you do that? I mentioned that there, there are basically three ways you could do this. One is if you have software. If you have software, you can combine the two designs no problem at all. You first put in your background quilting. Remember, that's the plaid. And then you just add on top the applique. All right. Combine them together. Save it to your USB. Put it on your machine. You're golden. Okay. So that's way number one. Way number two to combine these two is that on your machine, there may be an add button. What that means is that you would uh, load in your plaid, right? You would load your plaid design into your machine and then you would click on a button. I'm gonna write this down right here, add. Usually on many machines, there will be an add feature, okay? I'm gonna, again, this is just the second way of doing it. So I would hit add, then I would find this design, add it, and then it will, then you would hit embroidery and it has combined your designs, okay? The third way, let's go ahead and go to the front. The third way would be, you know what, I don't, I don't have software. I don't have a machine that says add, but you can still do this on your machine. What you would do is you would do one design at a time. I would bring up my plaid design, okay, my background quilting. I would stitch it all out and be done with it. And then without moving anything out of the hoop, without removing the hoop, anything else, I would then uh, bring up my clover, put that on and, and just not put it on top, actually just go ahead and do the clover design, okay? So on its own, does that make sense? There's three ways. One, you do it in software. Two, you do it on your machine by clicking the add button. And three, you just stitch one all the way through and then you're done with it. And now you stitch the other one all the way through and you're done with it, okay? Any questions about that? All right, again, I am talking about block by block quilting right now. Um, clear blue tiles quilting, we'll talk about on Wednesday. All right, so now that that's all out of the way, let's get stitching, shall we? The first thing I did is I brought up the design on my machine. I actually had used my add feature on this and I combined the two designs. So let's take a closer look at this window here, Andrew where I have my plaid quilting. Let's see if we could get real close here. Do you see how that plaid is behind the, the shamrock there? All right, so the first thing it's going to, to start to do is actually, let me go ahead and back up to my first step here. There we go. The first step is that I am going to um, do my my background quilting. All right, so then this is where the fun really begins. What I want you to do, again, if you're doing background quilting, is turn to page five in your instructions, okay? We walk you through, I know I told you there's instructions on your download itself. Well, the good news is it's also on page five, all right? So I want you to go to page five, Take a closer look. And right here, this is the same technique you would use for any of your background quilting for block by block method. All right, again, it says at the top, block by block method quilting. You will use this same 
a set of instructions for all of it. All right. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to actually just do it on my machine right now. But as you'll be able to see, if you're following along on page five, I'm going to show you what page five says. All right. OK, so the very first thing it tells me to do is to um, hoop my stabilizer. And I used our Kimberbell light mesh cutaway stabilizer. I love that stabilizer for background quilting blocks. OK, so I've hooped that. And then let's look at step three. Well, step three was to hoop the stabilizer. And then I, I put together my two uh, files. Remember, I did my background quilting and I did my clover on top. OK, so next is step five. I'm going to stitch what we would call the batting placement line. Okay, so here's the batting placement line. Let's go ahead and just keep it to the up close photo over here. Or, well, actually, yeah, we can put it down here. Let's go ahead and go up there. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, so I did my batting placement line. And now I know, of course, where to place my batting, right? And if you remember in the chart I showed earlier, it said to cut it. Um, I think it was five by five. What really matters at this point is that it's just larger than your placement line, okay? So I place my batting down there. I love using the Kimberbell Project batting for this because um, it's the perfect loft. The other thing I wanna do is just tape it in place just so that it doesn't shift while I put this back on the machine and stitch the next step. Okay, the next step is the batting what we'd call the batting tack down line. It's gonna stitch around twice. Patty, I love, uh, love your comment here. She says, my machine made combined designs, but I have to take the time to learn. So I'm doing one design at a time and having great success and so much fun. Patty, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. It is all about not being overwhelmed, just enjoying the process and taking it one step at a time. And when you do, you won't believe the success you're going to have is going to make you feel so darn good. All right. So the next step in your instructions, it says to trim the batting close to the stitch line. So that's when I'm going to get out my scissors here. These are our uh, Kimberbell applique duckbill scissors. And I'm, I like to, to put the duckbill towards the center. That's how I like to cut. I feel like you get the cleanest cut that way. And I am trimming this batting up right next to that stitch line. Okay. All right. Once I've done that, I'm going to place this back onto the machine. And it's going to stitch what we would call the fabric placement line, meaning that I know exactly where to place my next piece of fabric. What it ends up doing is it goes about a quarter inch around the entire square. I'll show you why that's so cool here in just a minute. All right, easy enough. So here we go. We've got the, the placement line for our fabric. I don't know how well you can see that here on the camera, 
but there it is an outer edge about a quarter inch away around the batting. Do you know what that means? That's what's so cool about how this is digitized. It means that your fabric is going to go out here beyond the batting. And that means there will be no batting inside the seams. Ah, don't you love that? It's not going to be bulky when you sew this all together. Just awesome. The next step I'm going to do is actually place my background fabric with the right side facing up on top. Okay, this is an oversized piece of fabric. It will be cut down uh, to the right size a little bit later, but we always like to start with an oversized piece, especially when we're doing applique, because uh, that process of applique tends to pull that fabric in. So we start out with a larger piece, and now it's going to do a tack down line again so that it doesn't move. Now, we also recommend fusing a um, the Kimberbell fusible backing on the back of any of our background blocks. That's always also a little helpful tip. So you may want to do that as well. All right. So let's go ahead to go to our next step, which is to do our fabric tack down line. All right, now if you could see this, oh, maybe that little shadow helps you see it a little bit better. Do you see how there is the batting and then it stops and then you've got the stitch line all the way around it? That is exactly what you want. This is not gonna shift anywhere when you go to do my favorite step, which is the background quilting itself. I am actually going to keep this green. Now, in our instructions, I think we had the background quilting as white, or we actually did it in our sample as white. But I personally, on this one, want to see the background. And I want you to be able to see it better, too. So now for the favorite part I, of, all, of all of it, I just love the background quilting. And that is to, with the push of a button, stitch that plaid design. All right, let's go ahead while that's stitching and go to the front. If there's any questions I can answer. Karen, I love your comment. She says, I'm so amazed at the detail that Kimberbell puts into their designs. They make it so easy. Karen, we couldn't ask for a nicer compliment. Thank you. I know our team um, at Kimberbell, they work really hard to make this as easy straightforward and easy and successful as possible. Thank you for sharing that. All right. <laughs> Connie, I don't think you're alone on that. And I love hearing that. She says, I bought my machine because I fell in love with Kimberbell. Thank you, Connie. That is so kind of you. Any questions that we have? Let's see. Just quickly scrolling through here. And I've got Brielle and Livy here to help me as well. So if I'm not answering anything, they can also help or let me know of anything that you're looking for. Let's see. Colleen says, I agree, the best batting for projects like this. Thank you, Colleen. Yeah, we love the loft on this. As I like to say, it's not too thick and it's not too thin. It's just right <laughs> it is perfect for batting okay and for your for your quilt blocks all right um elaine that's a good question she says is that two layers of mesh and actually elaine it's not it's just one layer of our lightweight cutaway mesh great question all right let's take a look at what we're going to do next are you ready to see how cute this background quilting is are you ready? Ah. Check that out. Oh my goodness, here we go. Okay, 
That is just too cute. And this is just in the four by four size, but I love this plaid quilting so much that I think I'm gonna use the other sizes for larger projects. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. Oh, super excited. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the front camera. Easy, right? So simple. I got my background quilting done. Done, check, out of the way. That means when I go to do this applique clover on top, I'm gonna be done with my quilting. I'm gonna be done with this block so that by the time I do the same technique on all the other blocks, it's gonna be finished. It's a finished project all done on your machine. Love it. All right, so I've done my background quilting. Let's go ahead and skip to, oh, where did it go? I want to go to Clover One here, and I've got it on page 14, okay? Page 14, I am ready to now stitch um, this clover block. So I want to go to direction step one, which tells me I need to peel off my um, backing off my glitter, okay? So if you are looking to do it just like the one we, we are showing, this is the Kimberbell Glitter Applique Sheet. And oh my gosh, you're going to love this. It comes in a tube, you can roll it out. It's a pretty good, decent size here for lots of projects. I've already cut a piece off too. Okay, and the best thing is it doesn't get on your hands. There's no glitter to get anywhere. But the important thing is here is that as directed in direction step one, you want to peel off that plastic, okay? All right, when you do that, this now becomes, again, no glitter is gonna come off on you, I promise. <laughs> this becomes a, a piece of fabric really, so to speak. And on the back is a fusible, okay? So just like I would a piece of fabric, I'm going to lay this on top of my applique piece. But I need to know, let's go ahead and go to the front camera. I need to know where I'm laying this, right? Um, so I need to stitch out the first step, which is going to be my um, clover outline. But there's something a little strange that's going on on our machine. Let me show you, let's see if we can get an up close uh, picture over here, Andrew. I want them to be able to see what's happening on my machine next. Remember how we combined the two designs together? Well, what's happening is that if I weren't going, let me see if I can, there we go. What happens next will always show me, at least on my computer here or on my machine here, will show me what's about to happen next. This step is for doing, doing the normal uh, way of doing applique, which is outlined on page 14. You would have to stitch your background placement line so you know where to place your fabric, okay? And you'd have to do the tack down line. But look, we've already done that, right? So what we can do on our machine is actually skip those steps. I can skip step, step six, I can skip step seven, and I'm gonna find my clover design. Do you see that? I'm gonna find my clover design, and when I see it, I'm ready to stitch that out, okay? Once again, let's go ahead and go to the front. Once again, I can do that now. I can skip those steps because I've already done my background quilting. I've already placed my background fabric. I don't need to do what's outlined in on page 14. Um, as you can see there, it looks like it's step two, three, and four. I don't need to do that because I've already done that when I did my background quilting. I hope that makes sense. Basically, you're just skipping ahead till you get to the part where you actually get to now uh, stitch the design on the block itself. And in this case, it is um, the clover placement line. All right, so let's go ahead and stitch that out. I'm on the right step on my machine. I'm ready to go. All right and then we'll lay down our applique piece.
Okay, Linda, that is a great question. I'm so glad you asked. She said, you mentioned putting some press on the back. Not sure what you mean. Um, we have, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. We have something called um, fusible backing. Let's see if we can get an up close picture of that. Okay. And this is something that we absolutely love pressing onto our background quilt blocks. Okay. We actually like pressing it onto anything that any kind of background that we're going to applique or do some kind of design onto we use our uh, fusible backing. And what this does is it serves a couple of purposes. It's going to give your fabric a little more body, a little more structure. And because of that, um, and because it's fusible and because it stays in place, this is permanent. This is not going anywhere. It's going to reduce puckering. Ah, the dreaded P word, right? We don't want to have puckering if we can, uh, you know, do something to prevent that. So it will reduce your puckering. Um, that's why we absolutely love the fusible backing. All right. The other uh, reason why some people would use fusible backing is if you're putting like a light fabric on top of a dark fabric and you want to reduce any shadowing. Yeah. Try fusible backing on the back. This is an addition to your stabilizer, okay? So don't just do this and not the stabilizer. This is just another layer of, um, just another layer in there that will help produce puckering. I hope that helps answer your question, um, Linda. All right, let's take a look at what happened here. Uh -huh. Now we've got, now we know where to put our applique fabric, right? our applique sheet because it has stitched an outline of your clover. Notice that? And just like you would a piece of fabric, you're gonna lay this down with the glitter side up. If you were doing with this with fabric, you would lay it with the right side of the fabric facing up. And then I'm gonna just take a couple pieces of Kimberbell paper tape here and just tape that down in place so that it doesn't shift and, and move out of the way when I go to um, do the tack down line. The next step is what we call the applique tack down line and that will um, stitch another clover just directly on top and then we'll cut away the extra fabric or in this case, the extra glitter sheet. All right. While that's stitching, let's take a look at the comments. Gail, she says, is that like SF101? Yes, it's very similar. Um, it has a, a tighter weave, I would say, than the SF101, but yet it's still very soft and supple. So it's still going to make your fabric feel like fabric. It's not going to be stiff as, as a board, okay? It's still going to have some softness to it, um, but it is similar for sure. All right. Um, yeah, Julianne, that is definitely a personal preference. Um, she says, would you use white or green thread for the quilting? I will tell you, uh, Julianne, that in the the um, sample that our team made, they actually did use white in the background for the quilting. Um, but I wanted to be able to see it see it more and I wanted you to see it better. So I used green. So it really is a personal preference. Um, you know, I saw someone who did theirs in gold and I thought that was really pretty too. So totally up to you. Great question, Julianne. All right. Yeah, Karen says it's a lighter weight than SF101, so she likes it better. Thanks, Karen. Um, I appreciate that endorsement. We, we absolutely love it as well for all those reasons. Okay, so now, <laughs> I don't know how well you can see that, but we've got uh, the clover outline here. This is what we would call the tack down stitch. All right, but we need to remove all this extra away. And this is, you know, this is something that I know, um, you know, if you've been doing embroidery for a long time, you know exactly what I'm about to do. But hopefully this helps all those who are brand new uh, to machine embroidery as well. Let me kind of 
clear my space here. All right, so I like to lay it flat on a, on a flat surface. I, I highly recommend never trying to do this in your lap, all right? You don't want to do this in your lap because you will take the chance of popping that out. Okay, so I am using our duckbill scissors here. But as I can see, again, you're going to get a nice tight um, cut, which is fantastic. But if you really want to get into those little dips really close, you may want to switch over to another pair of scissors in our Kimberbell set. This is the Kimberbell scissor set. Okay, we've got a couple that would really help get into those tiny areas, smaller areas. And one are these micro tip scissors. And one are these flexible scissors. Whoop. There we go. So I'm going to try, let's try the micro tips. See how that does. The micro tips are really sharp to the very tip. So that's why it gets in there nice and easy as we go in, down into those grooves, okay? All right, so I like that. Let me try another one as well, just to show you how versatile um, all of these scissors are. I like the Flexi Snips too, uh, that I'm showing because it's got this curved bottom, which is gonna be nice to glide along there. It's very sharp all the way to the tip which is going to help get into those grooves. Um, and because they bounce like this, it's really uh, much easier on the hands. It's going to reduce hand fatigue. So if you've got maybe it's some arthritis um, in your hands, you're going to love that as well. Okay, there we go. Simple enough. Now we're going to go to our final stitch, which is the satin stitch. And I'm just going to leave it in with the same green thread and stitch away. All right. <laughs> Cindy says, can you give a hint on what's coming next? Let's go ahead and go to the front camera. Ah, <laughs> oh, Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. You know, you, you get me when I'm like right here with you and I'm about to just go and tell you everything, right? You're smart, Cindy. <laughs> no, actually, we have some really fun things coming up, Cindy, and anyone else who's uh, wondering. One of the new themes that are coming up that I know many of you know about is called Two Scoops, Please. And that is an ice cream bench pillow. And I'll tell you what, it is pretty stinking cute. And not only is the pillow itself cute, but the embellishment kit that comes with this pillow Let's just say it is over the top, including a little music box that the, the ice cream chuck is going to play um, the song. Let's see. Is it the entertainer? You know what I'm talking about? Does that like bring back childhood memories when the ice cream man was coming around? That's in the new Two Scoops Bench Pillow. And it is darling. It's darling. Do we have pictures of it? Ooh, I think Andrew says he can find a picture. Let's let's see, Andrew. Work your magic while this is stitching because it is pretty darn cute. All right. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> see the ice cream truck there? There's a music box that plays the entertainer song in it. Oh my goodness, too cute. And then the ice cream uh, scoops, they've got like the foam underneath it. So it looks like it's an ice cream cone. There's some fun piecing in the hoop. <laughs> yeah, Barbara says, where do I get the embellishment kit and the fabrics? Oh, Barbara, there are so many uh, great quilt shops out there that are selling that, or that are doing pre-orders now. So check that out. Do we have any other images to show? Any up-close ones? I, You've got to see the detail on here. It is just something else. Ah, 
Andrew's going to find some more pictures for us while this is stitching out. Lots of details, lots of the, the buttons on here. There's, do you see the little ice cream cart there? Those um, ice creams that are on there, they're buttons. And uh, there's several more as well. There's some sprinkles. Oh, look how cute. Yeah, we all scream for ice cream, that's for sure. <laughs> Isn't that going to be a fun summer pillow? So, so there you go. There you have it. That is coming up. <laughs> Marion says, OMG. That's so adorable. So adorable. I definitely want to make that. Yeah, me too. Me too. All right. So check that out. You know, there's cool shops um, all over the world that sell Kimberbell. And if you um, are not uh, one that lives near a quilt shop, no worries. Uh, they also sell online. So check them out for sure to get that. All right. Okay, so this is continuing to stitch out. While it does, let's go ahead and talk about what I'm going to show you next. And that is um, how to do those cute little lace uh, blossoms, right? So the lace blossoms, let's go ahead and turn our page to... Uh, page nine. This is for the dimensional flowers, and it is stinking cute, as I like to say. As you'll notice there, um, it says to use a wash away stabilizer. So we've used our Kimberbell wash away stabilizer. This one is done in a four by four hoop, so I've already hooped that. You only need one layer of it, all right? And then a couple other interesting things you're going to want, and I'll sh I'll tell you why here. But you're going to want some tool. Do you see that? This is like the netting stuff, right? This is tool. We just used white, and so um, we love this because of the extra structure it gives the flower, and because we are using our iridescent mylar sheets to give it some sparkle and shine. Um, this tool will help sandwich that, um, uh, that iridescent mylar, and then it's not going to um, like come off of it. It's not gonna peel off, okay? I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So just know that we're gonna use two pieces of tool, our wash away stabilizer, and um, some iridescent mylar, and then thread. That's all you're going to need for this next one. All right, that's almost done. Okay, so get so uh, you know keep that on deck, shall we say, as we are about to launch into this next part. Okay. Now, you'll want to do um, this the little lace flowers first before you do uh, uh, some other blocks. Because you're going to be using them, let's go ahead and go to the up close camera here. You'll want to stitch that out first. There we go. Because do you notice here on the hat? Look at that little dimensional flower. So stinking cute. That's going to be on there, so you'll place that a little bit later. And you're also going to use the other little flower blossoms inside this base, all right? So you'll want to do this next step first. We are almost done. All right. So once again, if you do not have a hoop size that's large enough to do the background quilting on this block or even on this block, no worries. I got you covered because on Wednesday, I'm going to show you how to use clear blue tiles to do that background quilting, even though you have a smaller hoop. All right. And the other good news is that this hat right here, the hat itself takes a six by 10 hoop, but because we want all of our friends who own five by seven hoops to be able to do this block, we give you extra instructions that you can download. It's a separate PDF for double hooping this, as well as doing the background quilting, all with a five by seven hoop. So no worries. If you've only got a five by seven hoop, we've got you covered. 
but join me on Wednesday for all the details on that. All right. I'm done. I'm done with this block. Ah, oh, isn't that fun? Let's take a closer look at that. There we go. Doesn't that glitter just make it? I just absolutely love the effect it has on that simple clover. And look how fun that background quilting is behind it. Love it. Now, I've already done my other clover, which was just done with fabric. And I've done another clover, which was done with our seafoam green leather. So now I've got three of my blocks done. Boom, 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 right here. So my homework for you today, my friends, is to work on your clover blocks and get all three of them done by Wednesday. You'll have them done in no time today if you start today, okay? The other thing I want you to do is uh, make just the bottom half of this um, pot of gold, okay? So let's take a closer look at this over here so that I can point out a couple of things. There we go. This block, even though it looks like one whole block, it's actually divided into two smaller blocks and then sewn together. All right, so this block, since it's applique, I want you to finish that by um, Wednesday as well. If you wanna just keep up with it, of course you can finish it anytime. But if you wanna keep up with me for the so long on Wednesday, I want you to finish this block. You're gonna notice that the top of the block is the purple fabric, and then that's where it stops. And then on Wednesday, we're going to piece this, um, the rainbow together, all right? And then we sew it all together and boom, it looks like one block. How cool is that, all right? So I want you to do that. If you have a large enough hoop to do this background quilting as is, then go, you can go ahead and you know do that block. That's a fun one. And look at how cute that clover quilting is even on the hat. Love it. And then also, work on this. So all of our applique blocks would be done by Wednesday. So that by Wednesday, we can also learn how to do the piece blocks. Whoop, right there and right there. All right, okay? All right. Now, I have finished those three blocks. Let's go ahead and look at page nine, which is the dimensional flowers. And I will pull up the, the uh, design here. And this one, I want you to have both um, white thread. If you're going to do your flowers white, you can do them any color you want, right? But if you're going to do them white, I want you to put white at the top of your um, the top of your machine as well as in the bobbin. All right. Okay. Let me find these real quick, and then we can. Nope, that's not it. Hmm. Let's see my little clovers, my little flowers. Huh. I might have deleted that. Oh, boy. Oh, no, there they are, I think. Yes, there they are. It, it looked like, the, hey, this is a good lesson for all of us. I wondered to myself, did I, delete, did I accidentally delete this? But because it's white, it didn't really show up on my screen. <laughs> so let that be a lesson to you. It's there. You just got to look for it. And it's probably the first file that shows up on your screen. All right. Okay. So I have hooped just one layer of wash away. And if I'm looking at my instructions on page nine, it says to stitch the flower placement line. All right. Well, I've got my uh, green. You know what? I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in green only so you can see it <laughs> because normally I would do it in white, but how fun is that on camera when you won't be able to see the white very well? So you know what? We're going to do it in green. Why not? Okay. So the very first step is to stitch the flower placement line and then we'll go from there. And that doesn't sound good either. 
<laughs> okay, let's go to the front camera. You guys, guess what I just did? I just broke my needle. <laughs> you have more, Brielle, to the rescue. You know, this is the beautiful thing about live is because these things happen, right? And we're just going <laughs> to, we are just going to roll with it. All right. I'm going to. Now, what would really be crazy is if I stitched through my finger and nobody has time for that today, right? <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> Go for real. For real. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> She's. She got me needles. Doesn't everyone need a Brielle in their life? Oh, I got you. I got needles for you. Oh, my goodness. Extra bobbin. Extra bobbin. You just just start winding extra bobbins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Heidi. She says, ouch, I break needles, too. Yeah. You know what I'm afraid of, guys? I'm afraid. Of, I'm afraid it might have gone. The other piece might have gone in there. Oh, my goodness. Okay. First things first, we're going to change the needle. <laughs> and now you're going to see how Kim just rolls with it. All right. Here we go. Do I have another needle down there? If I don't see it now, I'll probably see it later, right? <laughs> Which is, is not a good thing. Okay. I've got... I don't think the other part of the, I didn't see the other part of the needle. Mm. Okay, no needle in there. See, you're gonna see live how we just we just go. Um, and someone's out there probably going, Kim, don't touch that. Okay, um, you know what? I, I'm just gonna call it good. Let me see. I'm not seeing any broken needle. Hmm. You have a magnet? Okay, I'm just going to... What are you guys telling me out there? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> right? <laughs> Use a magnet to find it? Suzanne says, yeah. Brielle, do I have a magnet? I don't know. Okay, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun, they said. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'm, I'm scared. I'm a little nervous to, to start the machine again, but, you know, we're just going to go for it. All right. One. Oh, guess what? There it is, folks. I found it. Ah! Okay, the angels are singing. I found the other part of the needle. There it goes. I think we're good. It was hooked to the thread. All right, that, that makes sense. <laughs> now I'm still nervous though. All right. <laughs> Who out there says they need a Brielle out there? Huh? <laughs> Okay, now I really messed things up. Okay, there we go. Needle threader worked. We're gonna screw everything tight again. Life is good. All is well in the world. Okay, boom. Whew, are you ready? Let's try this again. <laughs> now, let's go. <laughs> Another tip I'm gonna give you, if this ever happens to you, is that when a needle breaks, <laughs> here's the tip you weren't expecting, but when a needle breaks or something gets caught or whatever happens, turn off your machine and turn it on again. Because what happens is the calibration might get a little ski wampus and it could uh, offset the, the design. So I'm just gonna, when in doubt, start it out again. I'm going to pull it up and then we'll go from there, shall we? <laughs> what are people saying? <laughs> oh, Anita says green bobbin thread. Yeah, Anita, you're, you're right. You're right. But I'm going to keep it to white for now. Just, just because. But yes, normally if I were to be doing this, I would use 
green on the top, green on the bottom, or white on the top, white on the bottom. Okay. Are you ready for this? Oh, oh remove embroidery frame. See, I love this machine because it just tells me exactly what I'm supposed to do here. Okay. Let's try this again. Embroidery. All right. I think we're good. Nope. Let's try one more. And remember, it was the design that didn't look like it was there, but it's there because it's white. <laughs> okay. I'm sweating, guys. <laughs> Let's try this again. Now, everyone, hold your breath with me because I am about to start this. And here we go. Beautiful. Let's go to the front. Oh. Are you guys sweating with me? All right. We're, we're good. We're so good. It's all, all is, all is well. It's humming like it should. No broken needles. <laughs> okay. Melissa says a great question. What is the reasoning? Let's see. For matching the bobbin thread. Great question. We always like to recommend matching the bobbin thread when doing a freestanding lace. And so this is kind of a freestanding lace project. If you're going to see it like on the front and the back, like these flowers, they're dimensional. So you see like what's on the other side. If you were to look really closely, let's go ahead and go to this closer camera here. Okay. Blacked out. There we go. Oh, nope. There we go. Okay. Mm. So, Melissa, you, because, because you see the, it, it kind of bends forward, it's hard to really tell in the video, but because you would see the outside edges and see it from the front and the back, then you always want to match your, your bobbin thread. That's why. So, great question. Love it. Okay. All right. Woo! Folks, we did it. <laughs> we did the outline of the flowers. Here, let's take a look. Uh, and I'm doing them in green because I want you to see it better. Uh, kind of see it better. There we go. Okay. So the next step, we got all that out of the way. The next step is to take your tool, now where'd my tool go? Oh, here we go. You're gonna do a series of three things. You're gonna lay down your first piece of tool, just on top. You're gonna lay down your mylar on top of that. And then you're going to have that sandwiched in between another layer of tool, okay? Right on top. Now, if your, if your pieces aren't too oversized, you may want to tape it in place. Mine are nice and big and oversized, so I don't, I'm not going to tape it down, okay? But if you have smaller pieces, you might want to tape it down on each side. Okay, now that that is done, I'm going to put it back onto the machine where it's going to stitch lots of little detail stitches and an outline stitch, okay? There we go. Oh, Birdie says she's going to watch the replay. Thank you, Birdie. That, that sound started to happen again. I got a little nervous. All right. I think we're okay. Um, yeah, if you... Maybe I should slow it down. Huh. Well, there we go. Um, you may want to slow down your machine. That, that might have helped me out a little bit there. We're in, I'm in the middle. I'm not going to worry about it yet. Okay. Um, yes, Anita, isn't the tool on top of the mylar? Yeah, you have two pieces of tool, Anita. You're going to have your tool, your mylar, another piece of tool, like a little sandwich, okay? Tool is going to sandwich that mylar in, all right? Okay, Melissa, another great question. So does that mean it's okay to have your bobbin thread white if it was just applique or even background quilting? Yes, 
hundred percent yes, Melissa. That is an excellent question. I always use just regular white bobbin thread. The only, like if I'm doing just like regular applique, the only thing I might change my bobbin thread to a different color when doing applique is sometimes with lettering, especially if it's like little tiny lettering, um, and I was doing like black, um, black thread for my top, I might put black thread in my bobbin. That would be about the only time I would change. The other times I would change bobbin thread is something like um, that's dimensional. So great, great question, Melissa. Okay. Joy asked, is this an automatic download when purchased online? And Joy, that is correct. It is, um, you'll receive it immediately upon purchase. Oh no, Nancy. Oh, she says, my cat likes to eat tool. Then it's a trip to, <laughs> to the uh, mm, trip there and an enormous vet bill. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, Nancy. Don't you don't want uh, the tool by the pets, right? <laughs> Keep that out of out of reach for sure. <laughs> oh, that poor cat, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Of course, if you have any problems with your download, our customer care team is so happy to help you. Just reach out to them, give them a call, or <laughs> give them a call, or um, reach them online um, through our our website, and they will be happy to help you with any issues you may have. They are awesome. All right. Okay. Lots of people are, are just joining in, maybe going to watch a little bit later. Awesome. Yeah, this is available for anyone at any given time. So be sure to check it out if you have to leave early or whatever it may be. Now, you're going to love how this tool, just a simple layer of, well, the tool and the mylar together just is beautiful. It just makes those little flowers glisten and uh, stand up on their own. It's just really, really awesome stuff. Okay, so we are done with that next step. Oh, I'm glad I did this in green so that you can see that a little bit better. Ooh, there we go. All right. So as you can see, um, it does like a little bit of a light motif fill inside and then it has an outline stitch around it. So what we want to do is actually remove the extra tool, just like you would extra fabric. You want to remove the mylar sheet and then finally the last layer of tool. So to do that really quickly and easily, you're just gonna lay this down again on a flat surface and one layer at a time, you're gonna cut through this, okay? So I'm just going to take my little uh, flexi snips here and cut away the extra tool. Okay, I'm just gonna, for sake of time, just do this on one of the flowers, okay? But you would do all of them. Oops, well, you know what? This won't take long. Okay, I'm gonna do that. We'll just do all of them. All right, you can take a little bit more time to get in there. Um, the second layer is the mylar, and the nice thing about that is that it just pulls away. So I'm not gonna use my scissors for any of it. Okay. Voila. Oh, it just adds that little glisten in there that is so, so pretty. All right, okay. If you need to get into any small areas, you could take the tweezers and just pull on that and get that out of there, okay? And then finally, you have one more layer of tool. So again, I'll just take my scissors and do that. 
we are almost done guys simple 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 you know one thing i i love to think about as i'm doing these kinds of projects is you know sure this is this is a little flower that is designed to go into that um vase of of clovers and flowers but because it is so stinking cute as a little flower and there's um two different sizes on here i'm thinking how cute would this be to stack one flower on top of the other after it's all said and done you've washed away your stabilizer and you've got these cute little dimensional flowers it would be so cute to stack one on top of the other put a button through the middle and then just do like a whole vase of these little flowers or maybe put a button in the middle and do you know a little hair clip for a little girl wouldn't that be so cute think always think beyond the project because there are so many possibilities all right so there we go now finally the last step is i'm going to put this back in there and it's going to do a nice little bit thicker stitch a little satin stitch around the outside of those flowers and then we'll be done all right as that's stitching let's see what other questions you may have Looks like Libby and Brielle are on it. They are helping answer. Uh, Jocelyn said, are you doing two layers of tulle? Um, yes, but they're not together, Jocelyn. So you have one layer of tulle, mylar, and one more layer of tulle, just like a little sandwich, okay? Why? Oh, it's because it's going to, why am I doing the tool? It's because, oh, why are you doing, not you are doing? Okay, I, I got you. <laughs> the question is, why are you doing? That is a great question too, Jocelyn. Um, and that's because a couple things. One, it's going to um, give it some structure. Okay, okay, again, this is a dimensional item that you're going to be washing away the stabilizer and it's got to have something for that mylar to grab onto right but still look like dainty um certainly you could use fabric but then you've just got a big thick fabric flower that doesn't show the glistening and kind of the see-through lacy effect right so the tool just gives it some structure so that it can stand on its own when the stabilizer is washed away so there you go and the second reason would be because you have like all of that fun mylar in there, if you didn't have something on top, um, you risk the chance of it like breaking off in pieces and just going somewhere. So that tool is also going to, you know, prevent that from happening. So hopefully that helps. Great question, Jocelyn. And I'm glad I figured out <laughs> what you were actually asking um, a little bit later. Okay. All right. Uh, Christy says, I've been looking forward to this so long. You've answered so many of my questions and concerns already. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Christy. And of course, if there's anything else that I haven't answered that pertains to what we're doing, the portions we're doing today so far, just ask away. And I can't wait to see you on Wednesday and Friday to do the rest of it. All right. <laughs> Donita, I agree with you. She says so many possibilities, not enough time. Oh, is that not the case or what? I absolutely agree with you. There's so many things you want to do. We all want to do. Yes. D, she says, I think it would be cute to make a vase of the dimensional flowers along with the fringe flowers. Ooh, D, I love that idea. Yeah, we've got all kinds of designs for fringe flowers. So combining the two, pretty darn cute. Love it. You know, even this design right here, this vase, let me show you. I've already stitched out a portion of it. But let's go ahead and take an up-close picture of this because that makes me think of something, D. If you're thinking, well, yeah, I would love to do like a whole vase of these flowers, but, you know, you've got the clovers in there. Hey, the nice thing is, this is how this stitches out. You're going to do um, 
the stems on their own first. Then you do the vase. So we put the mint, the fresh colored mint vinyl on top of that to give it like this blue uh, glassy look, which I just love. And then after those two things are done, that's when we added the clovers. But instead, just leave it as is. Don't add clovers and just make a bunch of those dimensional flowers in all different colors and add them to the tops of each of those stems. Ooh, that would be pretty darn cute, right? Ooh, I wanna see someone do that. I think that would be stinking cute. All right, um, okay, let's take a look. We are done. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, you just did lace all on your embroidery machine. All right, so this is wash away stabilizer. We're gonna pop this out of the hoop and we're going to trim away any of the extra stabilizer. You don't have to get, you know, too close to it. You don't wanna cut any stitches by accident, right? But I'm just gonna trim these little pieces away. Whoop, there, whoop, there we go. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There we go. See, I just trimmed away the wash away stabilizer just a tad. We're going to get a, there we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Again, in the instructions, it shows you to do it in white and on the pattern it's white. But I think that green is kind of pretty. Or you, you could do yellow or pink or whatever you'd like. Love it. Okay, I'm seriously going to make a whole bunch of these and do a vase full of just all flowers. I think that would be super cute. All right, so how do you wash this stuff away? It's really simple. Um, you're just going to take like a little, well, a couple of ways you could do it. You could take a little bowl of water, uh, just cool water and soak them for just a few minutes. It's going to, to wash away that wash away <laughs> stabilizer really quickly. Um, or you could just run it under a faucet, either way. I personally, um, I like just taking like a little cup of water and just throwing them in there and let it soak for a few minutes and then it just, boom, it's done. Okay, so you know how I ha everyone needs a Brielle in their life? <laughs> Brielle, can you wash these for me? Yeah. <laughs> She's so awesome. Brielle is quite the embroiderer herself. <laughs> Here you go. Brielle's yeah. going to wash those for me while we talk about the next step or the next block. Now, we're almost done, guys. So stay with me just a little bit longer. We're going to try to keep this to an hour and a half. So I promise we are almost done. But here's, I showed you that I just, I did this block here. Again, if you do not have a large enough hoop to do this background quilting, um, I'm going to show you on Wednesday how to use clear blue tiles to use um, an all over quilting design in the background and you can still do it. It's just awesome. 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 Love it. Okay. So I've gone to the part. Let's go ahead and skip to this portion in the instructions, which is page 11. Page 11. Okay, so if you'll go to page 11, it tells you you need to um, uh, remove the glitter sheets. Oop, right here. So I got two little gold glitter sheets because those become actually the centers of our flowers. Did you notice that? Oop, right there. Okay, so I'm going to do that first and just lay that down so I have it ready when I need it, okay? And then um, I did, I combined my designs, whoop, right? There we go. I combined my background quilting design. So same thing that I did with the clover design, I found out uh, by reading the instructions at the top of page 11 that we used the plaid design that was a four by eight size. Okay, a four by eight size. Um, I combined it with the applique design itself. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the front camera while that's getting washed. Let's review three ways to combine background quilting designs from Kimberbell. 
Okay, this background quilting designs are a separate purchase because it's optional. You may want to do it and you may not want to do it. Plus, by making it optional like that um, and you do it, you are you are building a library of quilting designs that you can use for anything. So think beyond just this pillow. You've downloaded a plaid, for example, and you can use it on anything you'd want. Okay, so three ways to combine these designs. First, if you have software, you can take your background quilting design, you can take your applique, bloop, merge them together, and there you go, you're done, okay? Second, if you don't have software, many machines will have an add button feature. You can take your background quilting design, click, uh, pull that up on your machine, hit add, the word add, okay? And then you add your, your applique design and it goes right one on top of the other, boom, you're done. You've got your designs combined and ready to stitch, okay? And then the third thing you can do is if you don't have software, you don't have the add feature, you can actually just do one at a time. You can quilt your entire background first, and then without removing anything from your hoop, now go to your next design, which is the applique, put it on top, done, okay? It will always center one on top of the other. And just like that, Brielle is back. Boom, thank you, Brielle. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got cute little flowers ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so I got my little petals. Ah, there we go. Again, I did them in green so that you could see them better. If you want to do them in white, yellow, pink, whatever color you want, there you go. So I went through the instructions on page 11 and... 12. <laughs> and now I am at, if you look at the top of page 12, I am at the part where I'm on direction step 13. Okay. Which means if I look at direction step 12, let's go ahead and get a close up of this, Andrew. Direction step 12 was I did the little flower outline. I, I don't know how well you can see that, but at the top, of this stem and at the top of this stem are little outlines of flowers. That's going to show me exactly where to place the dimensional flower, okay? This bigger one here is going to go at the top of that. All right, so let me pull that design up and then we'll go from there. We are almost done. Okay, lucky us, and here we go. All right, embroidery. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead because, like I said, I've already done um, the clovers, and I've already done my placement line for my dimensional flowers. So now what I want... Okay, now what I want to do is place my mylar down. So I'm going to take another piece of the mylar. Okay, this is just another sheet of the iridescent mylar. And I'm going to place, remember I have the outline of my flowers here. I'm just going to place it on top. Okay, and then I want to tape it in place so that it doesn't shift. All right, so I'm going to do that real quick. And now I can go to step, um, we're going to look at step, uh, direction step 14 in your instructions, okay? And that is going to stitch, let me make sure, it's going to stitch the, the detail of the flower. Okay, again, I'm going to do this in green because why not, right? Okay. I'm gonna just have green flowers. I think it's gonna be super cute. <laughs> so what it does, let's go ahead and go to the front. 
what this does is doing some a little more detail stitching um, in the background so that when the dimensional part is laid on top, it just, it kind of looks like two layers of flowers. Don't you love that digitizing? Just awesome stuff, okay? All right, so it's going to do that stitching and then we're going to tear away the mylar. Mm, let me make sure here, stitch the flower, satin outline, tear away the mylar. Okay, I just am gonna make sure I'm on the right track here. Oh, it's so pretty. Can't wait for you to see it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Nitsa asked about the size of hoop. And yes, while this, some of these are six by 10, um, we will always make sure that you can do this in a five by seven as well. Now the background quilting might not be able to be done in a six by 10, but on Wednesday, I'm gonna show you that with the help of clear blue tiles, you can do the background quilting even with a smaller hoop, okay? All right, so it did an outline of the flower and now it's doing some fill stitches, okay? And then I will tear away the mylar, the extra mylar. Dee says, the, blade, the vase block is my favorite. It's so pretty. Yeah, it is mine too. And I can't wait to now do one with a whole bunch of flowers in it. Super excited about that. Someone asked about SVG files. Yes, uh, there should be SVG files in there. We always include SVG files if it is an applique that has um, satin stitches around it, okay? Um, if it is a raw edge, we don't include SVG files for raw edge applique because that is, um, it's gonna work so much better with the tack and trim method. So, you, but for those applique pieces uh, that are in there, that have a satin stitch, yes, you will have that, okay? All right, now I'm at direction step 15, and now I'm just gonna tear away the extra mylar. Okay, we're pretty, getting pretty darn close, guys. There was a little extra trim there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it back into the machine and it's going to stitch a satin outline around those flowers. Again, this is just like, it's almost like because of how this is digitized, it's got a layer below it that looks like petals, right? And then you add the dimensional petals to it and now it looks like a full flower, so to speak. It's really, really cool digitizing being done on this. All right. Yeah, Lana says, I love the vase done in green vinyl instead of the clear vinyl. I do too, Lana, it's so pretty. Um, that is part of our, we have a collection of colored vinyls called Sweet as Candy Colored Vinyls. And we have a whole bunch of pinks and roses and peaches. And then we have a whole bunch of mints and greens and blues. Um, so check that out at uh, your favorite quilt shop because if they carry Sweet as Candy Colored Vinyl from Kimberbell, you'll have all that variety of colors, okay? Of course, they also carry um, the clear vinyl too, which we, we like a lot as well okay karen says the vase um let's see the vase block would be great on a bag <gasps> Ooh, i agree karen yeah i agree can't wait to see somebody do it maybe karen you should do that can't wait to see what you do okay tracy says i see rhinestones and ribbons in my future Ooh. I love that idea. You're speaking my language, Tracy. Some rhinestones, some bling, bling, bling. Love it. Great idea. Okay, Kathy agrees with that for sure. All right, so it's just doing the final satin stitch outline around there. Any other questions before we uh, finish with that?
Okay, Deb asks, what size hoop are you using for the vase and flowers? Um, I am using a six by 10 hoop. Now the design itself uh, for the vase and flowers, I believe is a five by seven. Let me just make sure, yep. It's a five by seven, the design itself. But because I am doing background quilting, which is bigger than the five by seven, um, uh, I am using the six by 10 hoop size to, to finish it. Okay. All right. Mm, Donna says, other than the green for the season, I prefer the blue vinyl for water. Yes, I agree. In fact, I believe on the spring showers quilt, did we use blue vinyl for the puddle? It seemed like we might have. There's a puddle, a puddle block on the spring showers quilt. I think we used blue vinyl for that. So fun stuff. All right, so we are done with a satin outline that is direction step 16 in your instructions. And now it's going and see how it's the pretty, I love that actually. That ain't too shabby. Okay, I like the green. It's a little lighter than the other. So add some dimension there, love it. Okay, so um, I'm going to stitch um, the placement line for the, the medium center of the of the flower all right so let's go ahead and do that step and actually that's going to be in gold so i do want to quickly um change my thread here's another little tip when you're switching thread um to help with those tension discs i always like to and would re highly recommend <laughs> any any shop out there would also tell you cut your thread at the top and then pull your thread out from the bottom because that's going to help with the those discs that that thread goes through. Okay. All right. So cut at the top, pull, pull the excess thread from the bottom. All right. So now it's going to do a little tiny circle here for um, the center of my flower. And now, are you ready for the fun? Let's do the overhead camera here. It's hard to see it because it's yellow, but there is the center of the flower. And now I'm going to place one of my dimensional pieces. Can we do it this way better? Let's try this one this way. Ah, perfect. Okay. So it stitched just a little center dot there. Now I'm gonna take my other dimensional flower and I'm gonna place it right on top there. Okay, right on top. And I'm gonna take just a little piece of tape to hold that in place while it stitches the center. Okay, all right. So let me grab that. Okay, I don't want that to shift. So I'm just gonna place just a little bit right there, maybe even a little bit down here. Okay, all right. Now it's going to stitch just another little circle so I know where to place my glitter. All right, we're getting there, guys. And then I'm getting my glitter ready. Okay, just a circle, no, nothing filled, it's just a circle. So I know where to place this, okay. Again, let's see if we can get an up close of this. There we go. Now I'm gonna play, this is an oversized piece, but I just wanted to be able, you can see it very easily. I'm gonna place that just on top and now it's going to tack that down and then we'll cut away the extra. Okay, you can also tape that um, in place, but mine is so oversized, I think I'll be okay. It's not going anywhere. Okay. 
and you're just about done. All right. So that has tacked that down right there. We have some extra to, to pull away. So I'm just going to quickly take my scissors here and just trim all the way around the outside edge. And then we'll be good with that flower. <laughs> Ooh, there is just something special about that gold glitter center. Wow. I can remove my tape. Okay. If you could just see through the screen how cute that is. Okay. So see how because we did that first layer. I think it blacked out. There we go. See how we did the first layer and it's got the, the sparkle and shine and, and glimmer from the mylar. Now we add our second layer of petals and it's all tacked down with this gold. I'm going to squeeze it there. <gasps> Look how cute. Like you, you guys, I seriously want to just squeal in delight. So, <laughs> so fun. Oh, that just makes me happy. Doesn't that just make you smile? Oh, here's an even better look at it dimensionally. It just makes you smile. It's the little things in life, my friends, the little things that just make you happy. So there you have it. I'm going to repeat. I'm not going to do it here today because I know you've got to go. You've got lunch, lunch to eat and things to do and blocks to embroider. But you would do the same exact steps for the other little flower that's in the vase. And you would use your smaller flower for that. And then when you go to do, and then you're done with block. When you go to do this block, the same type of technique. Uh, because you have the dimensional flower that's right there on the hat as well. All right. What do you think? <laughs> Ooh! Tracy says, it's the details that make it fabulous. I couldn't agree with you more, Tracy. It is all about the details here at Kimberbell. And we love them. We absolutely love them. <laughs> Shannon, thank you, Shannon. Thank you for not saying um, that I'm, I'm crazy. She says, Kim, your happiness is infectious. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> not that your, your happiness um, is kind of crazy. It's just that it's ha it's infectious. And I hope that, um, you know, passes on to you because I can just imagine when you go to do these things in your own homes, you're going to be feeling the same way. It's going to make you giggle. It's going to make you just go, oh my gosh, that just cannot be any cuter. Just it's the little things and we need all of the happiness we can have, right? <laughs> all right. Joanne says heading down to get started today. Yes. Do it. Do it today. Um, it's just fun. It's just fun. It's just, it's that little bit of me time, shall we say, in our lives that we can just, you know, set aside a little bit of time for us and a little time in our sewing rooms and a little time to just, even at the dining room table, push the dishes aside and just have some time to do something that you love and brings you joy. That's what it's all about. So, this week, we are going to finish this pillow together. Today, I want you to work today, tomorrow, Wednesday. I want you to work on basically the applique blocks. And if you, you know, want to try your hand at background quilting, you won't regret it. It is just um, a lot easier than you may think. And once you give it a go, you're going to be so impressed with yourself that, that you made this all on your embroidery machine. It's just, it's just fun. Okay, um, so try it out. Applique box Wednesday. We'll talk about um, uh, the piece blocks. We'll do some more quilting in the hoop using clear blue tiles. And then Friday, we'll put it all together with the borders and the, um, the flanged edge, all of it. And then we'll be done. And you'll have it in time for all of your March decorating, even a month early. Can you believe it? A month early? Like, who can say that? <laughs> Not me. Usually I'm like the, the week before the holiday, right? <laughs> All right. Any other questions I can help answer before I go?
Um, I hope you enjoyed today's lunch hour so long. You guys have been so kind in your comments. Thank you. Of course, if there's anything I didn't get to answer live or, you know, as you're if you're sewing along a little bit later, you're going, oh, wait a minute. I got a question. Just go ahead and and uh, post your questions and we'll be sure to go back through um, and see what we can help answer. We want you to have a lot of fun with this and a lot of success. Right. And um, anyway. Is I just hope you have a great time doing it. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today, everyone. I wish you the very, very best and all the fun to be had with this project. I will see you on Wednesday. Actually, two different times. Join me on Wednesday. First of all, at 10 o'clock a.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time, you can join me for What's New Wednesday. It's something that I do every Wednesday on Facebook or our YouTube channel. And I show you exactly that. What's new at Kimberbell? What are people talking about? What's coming to a store near you? Um, all that kind of stuff. Every Wednesday at 10 a.m. I do that from my home sewing studio and uh, we, we just have a good time. So so join me at 10 o'clock. Then a couple hours later, join me for the lunch hour so long at 12 Mountain Standard Time um, so that we can do this next part of the pillow. Okay. And then finally, if you don't catch us on Facebook or if you want another way of catching us and never missing an episode, you can join us over on our Kimberbell YouTube channel. Yes, we got one of those too. So we would love for you to head on over there and hit like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Those are two very important things So um, on, over on YouTube so that you'll never miss an episode. Sometimes we get so busy and, and such that you know we might miss it on facebook but you'll be notified when you like and subscribe to our channel on youtube all right so either way join us in one or both places we'd love to see you all right i'll see you on wednesday at 10 a.m or at noon for the lunch hour so long have a great day everyone Bye bye